That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back to I finally have most of my voice back after yelling at the referees at the Notre Dame USC game Saturday night edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, thank you for joining me. You can find the program on the very popular website known as YouTube.com. Do subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. Give the video a thumbs up if you approve of the content upon its completion. Twitter, search bar, always Irish or at JKZND4. Emails, always IrishND at gmail.com. Always Irish Radio, 312 900 15 Listen, we're going to get back to the live call-in stuff, but last week was chaotic. Me being in South Bend a few days threw off my routine, so we're going to get back into it. More information on that coming shortly. So, here we are. My voice is back from being at the game. Thank you for understanding the delay. I just couldn't handle the bad calls, and there were a lot of them. The roughing call was abhorrent. Targeting. Here's the other thing. When you're at the game and you're sitting high, kind of like I was, you can see the whole field, not just what they're showing you on TV. That meant I could see that we were getting held on every single play and it never got called. Okay. Then we have the Crossroads Project, which provides me a 900 foot HD TV that shows me the replays of all these bad calls. I couldn't handle it. And I was yelling so much, my voice went completely out. I had no voice Sunday and most of Monday. Doing better now. That being said, let's get into the ball game a little bit, shall we? So, Notre Dame beats hated rival USC 31-16. to Who in the world would have guessed that we'd have less stress towards the end of the USC game than the Toledo game? But football's crazy, college football's crazy, and here we are. This was a classic case of continue kicking your opponent while they are down, okay? Great job getting the win, moving the USC win streak to four, and starting out the second half of the season with, with a needed win. Notre Dame can't lose any more games. Now, while we're on this topic, couple points that I want to make, okay? Number one, as you know, I was in South Bend all weekend. I talked to everybody. That's just what I do. I'm a talker, okay? The Southern Cal travel group was extremely small. I understand from my uh, connections that work at the stadium that nearly half of their allotment was returned and unused. Uh, so... They expected to lose, didn't have a good turnout. And listen, I get it. You have no coach. You're not winning anything this year. What's the impetus to get in a plane and fly from Southern, Southern California to go to Indiana? Like, there is no reason <laughs> to do so. And I don't blame them that they didn't. But from the ones I talked to... They t didn't expect anything out of this game. It was just kind of something to do. But they are actually encouraged about the future and feel like under the new AD and leadership that they're going to get serious about football again at USC. So that was the vibe. That was the setup. I mean, USC people weren't talking trash. They know they have no room to. They are just praying that the administration gets serious and values football again. So good job for Notre Dame taking advantage of it, kicking them while they're down before they try and make their re-rise back up. Okay, so that's number one with the USC angle. They didn't have very many people there all weekend. Okay, little bunches of them, but it was nothing remarkable at all. It was a noticeably small contingent of that ugly, horrific, your grandma's casket lining colors that they have. It was atrocious. Not very many of them, okay? Now, here's the second thing I noticed. 
Not my first rodeo at Notre Dame home games. I would guess I've probably been to 60-ish in my lifetime. Many as a kid and then as I've grown older. Probably 60-ish. Somewhere in there's the amount of home games I've been to in my life. The vibe Friday into Saturday around campus was to me that of a fun social gathering, not a marquee football matchup with national implications. That's just the vibe I had. There was energy, there was excitement, there was a lot going on, but I didn't feel like it was football related. I felt like it was like we were all cooped up last year and now we're able to go out and do things again. Social excitement. That's sad to me. Uh, that's just not the vibe it should be for Notre Dame USC. And that's both teams' faults. Even if USC was in the same position they're in, but Notre Dame found a way to beat Cincinnati, the vibe would have been totally different because Notre Dame would still have high-level import as far as the result of this game and what happens in the national landscape. We just didn't have it because we lost a game and USC's treading water till they figure out their new direction. So I was telling my dad, we were walking around Friday and I, I'm like, I'm really disappointed that this isn't a more electric football vibe. I'm not saying there was no vibe. It was just more of a social one than a football one. And I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, on the scale of bush push on one end and that build up to zero, this was almost a zero. Like, it was a social thing. But, but it isn't even a 1% of the vibe of Bush Push and that buildup. So that I didn't love. There's no doubt college football is much better when this game has national import on one or both sides. My preference would be only our side. Let them still be crappy, but we're undefeated. It's a big game for us at least. That wasn't the feel... And I trust my feel, not my first rodeo, 60-something home games. I know how to read that campus, that feel, that vibe. Something to do, but not a big football game. That's what it felt like to me all weekend. Okay, It was great meeting up with so many people from Twitter, from my show, my stadium workers, friends, all of that. And that's going to get its own little segment coming later. And I also have an always annoyed segment that stemmed from this game. I can't believe that I'm going to record the always annoyed segment I'm going to record. I never thought I would be doing it, but I got to call out some things. So we're going to do that too. So those are going to get their own segments. This is going to be just the game review alone. All right. Was this game perfect? No. But worrying week to week about what we're going to see out of this iteration of the Notre Dame program, that's just how it's going to be all year. Okay, so you didn't know what you were going to see. You knew USC had talent, but overall is down. You're coming out of the bye week. How's that going to look like? All those things were in the mix. Notre Dame took care of business and beat their rival while they're down. That's the bottom line. In these rivalry games, just win and keep it moving. So good job on that front. Coming out of the bye, you don't know what you're going to get. There's some things we're going to nitpick, no doubt. No doubt. But the number one objective was met. And good job by everybody involved for getting this win. And we keep it moving. Let's talk a little bit about the offense first. Um, I felt like there was a lot of things to like, still a lot of things I didn't love, but given the dynamic we're working in, it was enough to beat your rival. Um, like, first off, what pops out into my mind should have been 21 to nothing very early on in this game. That's what was possible and available to us. That's what I wanted. That's what great teams do. 
put the hammer down every time you get an opportunity. Should have been 21 nothing early, and we're feeling a little bit relaxed, barely into the second quarter. That's not what we got. But that being said, the offense did take some noticeable steps forward that I think I can appreciate that can be built off of. Now, at the same time, some of these steps forward on offense are also connected to directly and are a result of how horrible Southern Cal is on defense. But at the same time, Notre Dame's offense needs to build confidence. So go ahead and kick this team while they're down. Run the ball and make it look like you're a normal team for once with some space. So I'm not saying the offense is perfect and it's automatically great now. No, absolutely not. But taking advantage of some of USC's weaknesses to build some confidence with the offensive line and the running game I think can be built off of and is a good sign. Kick this team while they're down before they get serious about football again. And that's what we did. Quarterbacks, as I suspected and thought would happen, we saw a Cone-Buckner blend at this position. The tempo was noticeably a little faster to start the game as I directly asked for and also the ball was getting spread around more with a little better tempo again that's what I asked for that's what I got I can respect and appreciate it I still say the more Buckner the better for me personally the more Buckner the better But I do understand that it is a tricky line to walk for the staff trying to win all the rest of the games on our schedule and develop for the future at the same time. I get that that's a tough spot. It is different for me as a fan than Kelly as a coach. Totally get it. To me, you're not winning anything I I value this year anyways, probably. So I want to see more development. Give me the young receivers. Give me the young quarterback. So then in two, three, four years, this baby looks great. And we're working out all those freshman mistakes now. Okay. But I respect the position the staff's in to have to walk the line of development while at the same time not losing any other games. But the more Buckner, the better for me because that's the future. And in the present, we're not winning anything that I value that much. So that's my position, but I understand why the staff isn't doing it that way. This blend is most likely what we're going to look at the rest of the year. The more Buckner, the better to me. Cone, 20 for 28, 189 yards, touchdown, and a tough interception that upon returning home from the game and watching on TV... Could have been called either way, simultaneous, come down, catch, offense, defense. Went USC's way, not a surprise given that the officiating was, in my uh, my opinion, a disgrace all evening long. Um, so we had the touchdown and then the tough interception that could have been called either way. It was fine. You, get, you give Cone a little bit of time, whether it's better offensive line play, a bad defense, or a blend of both. And it looks pretty decent. Unfortunately, that's not what we've had most of the year up until this game. Buckner, two for two passing, had a running touchdown. He's the future. I want to see more. I want to see more. So the offensive quarterback dynamic and structure coming out of the bye is pretty much exactly what I expected it to be at least. They sped up the tempo early on and spread the ball around to these guys in space. That's exactly what I said I wanted them to do coming out of the bye. And they did it. I can't complain that much. Wide receiver play. Here is the number one thing I liked from this group. The more Colsey and Styles we get, the better. Same idea with Buckner. Get 
these freshmen going. Learn through your mistakes now in a year where you don't have a chance to win the championship anyways. Get those youthful mistakes out of the way. Gain some experience. Learn what you did good, what you didn't do. Okay. The more snaps and targets Colsey and Styles get, the better in my opinion. Okay. So develop these guys now. Start the clock. Styles is already making a difference, has earned more snaps. Colsey catches balls thrown to him. Put those guys out there. Put him out there for more plays. Give them more targets. Mayer was targeted a lot early on in this game. Not so much later on in this game. I did not particularly like that. I'm on the record as saying there's no amount of catches or no amount of balls thrown to Mayer where I'm going to say it's too many. Nope, doesn't exist. So I don't understand why he was such a big factor early. We got away from him late. Maybe some of it was that we were actually having some decent success running the ball, which is something unheard of for us this year. So they decided to do a little more of that. Okay. Kyron, six catches as a receiver. I really, really like that. It's what we've all been saying. He is dynamic. Get him the ball in space with just a little bit of room, and he's going to do a lot of good things. Seeing Kyron get six catches, I love. Love that. Austin, four catches. Davis with the TD reception. For this group, I love the youth, and I want to see more of it. Okay? Now, the best part about this game offensively to me was our ability to actually run the football and actually for a while there looked like a competent offense when doing so. 170 yards, four per carry, three touchdowns. The O-line gave up one sack. I think this is something you could build off of. Now, if you're glass half empty the way I usually am, but you're going more half empty than I am, and you're just going to tell me the only reason we did that is because USC is so bad up front defensively. My answer to that would be, fine. So you took advantage of their weakness, did it? Now everybody in our program is building a little confidence. Fine. You took what was there against your rival. So I understand some of these numbers are inflated because they're bad. But at the same time, our offense is a group that needs to build some confidence and continuity. So I felt like we did see a step up in that regard with the offensive line play and the running game. It was a much better effort. I am just not used to seeing us this year be able to hand the ball off and have any room at all to do anything. So it was a pleasant and welcome surprise to me. Now, wasn't clean, wasn't perfect game by any means. Like I said, it should have been 21 to nothing very early on, and it wasn't. You miss a field goal, you drop a third down, okay? Should have been 21 nothing. And we let them hang around because we didn't do that. At the same time, beggars can't be choosers, man. Like, we know this offense is an ongoing week-to-week -week work in progress, there are some things to build off here that I feel a little better about on the offensive side of the ball. Build off the momentum you've gained here and keep winning ball games. Very simple concept to me. Now, as we switch over to the defensive side of the ball, I'm kind of torn on my reaction to this. If it's possible for the defense to kind of let me down, even in a 16-point effort, I kind of feel like that happened in a couple big areas that are a big deal to me. I always say on this show, my target for the Notre Dame defense is always 17 points allowed per game overall. We did better than that. Yet, in many ways, I'm sure even the defense themselves would say it wasn't their sharpest day. That's good news, actually. When you hold a team with a lot of raw skill talent to 16 points, and you didn't feel like you played all that great, 
I think that's overall a pretty good sign. But here's a couple areas of concern that I didn't appreciate. The tackling, a lot of the games seem not that crisp. Bad angles, too many swings and misses, getting juked out of your jack strap, yards after first contact, Ingram getting 138 yards rushing. I did not care for that. He was spinning out of tackles and juking our guys all day, and I didn't like it. I didn't like that, okay? So I didn't feel like that was that tight of a tackling and angle effort. And coming out of a bye, I expect it to be a sharper and crisper tackling and angle effort. Didn't care for that. And I feel like we gave up way too many easy yards on the ground. A lot of plays that could have been made that were not, that added to that total. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Number two, I said in the pregame show, Drake London is everything. You must stop him at all costs and require other guys to move the ball for them, not him. Instead, we came out of the bye and allowed him numbers-wise, in a lot of ways, his best game of the season. The first six games, he was averaging 11 catches, 139 yards. Versus us, we let him get 15 for 171 yards. Now, we did have no touchdowns. So in a lot of ways, that might be the biggest deal of all. That's good. But he was getting way too much yardage all night. All night. Now, I know what some of you are going to say. Some of you are going to say, well, we lost Hamilton, and that's why that all happened. I was blocked out from where I was sitting. He was kind of went down right in front of the Notre Dame sideline from where we were sitting. They said there's a player hurt. They didn't even say who it was, and I couldn't see anything that was happening. I just had to look and notice it had to be him because I didn't see him out there anymore. So I know some of you are going to say that's why Lundig kind of went off and Hamilton being hurt ruined our defensive plan. That can't be an excuse. Even early on, I did not see an actual plan to give him extra attention and stop him. Cam Hart should have been on him all night and wasn't. Then Hamilton's out. You got Lewis and then the other safety struggling to contain him all night. I did not feel like there was a dedicated enough plan to stop him pre and post Hamilton injury. I don't like that. He was everything. And you let him get 171 yards. He was running all over the place. Didn't care for that. Didn't care for it. They only ran it for 130-something yards, but it just felt worse to me due to the whiffs and the misses and the bad angles and the spin moves we were falling for and grabbing guys' jerseys but not bringing them down. Is this just a bye week issue where it was more about getting healthy than it was actually about practicing fundamentals? I don't know, but tighten it up. If there's a way for me to find a complaint when you give up 16 points to your rival, tighten it up. And I think even those defensive guys would say they got to do a little bit of a better job in these areas that I've referenced, okay? So, but three sacks, four tackles for a loss, a big interception return, strip sack to end the game, secure the win. Those things are all great because they're big plays that changed the game and won the game for us at the end. I just need it to be tighter throughout. And I think Marcus Freeman would tell you that as well. So it's a mixed bag a little bit for the offense and the defense. But in a winning effort that looked by the final score a lot easier than it felt in, in real time, where Notre Dame's at right now, take what you could get. Just take what you can get. Keep developing the young guys. Did enough to win. Yeah, we want some things tightened up, but beggars can't be choosers with what we're dealing with with Notre Dame this year. 
It is not a reload. It's a rebuild in a lot of ways. I don't like that, but it's the reality. And we just have to keep winning while developing. That is the mission. Like in the off season, I was all about finding out, is this a reload or rebuild? Some of it's a reload, but a lot of it's a rebuild. And so now the focus for me, the rest of this regular season is clear, crystal clear. The focus is don't lose any more games while developing your guys that are going to be here for the next few years. That is the overall goal. Offensively, this year is never going to be what I want it to be, but I do think the offense, offensive line took a step forward. We start running it decently the second half of the year. That makes Cone's life or Buckner's life a lot easier, makes life easier on the receivers. It'll go a long way. So I'm really hoping, especially some of the success in the run game and not allowing sacks isn't just a situation where it only happened because USC sucks. I really hope this is a building block moving into the second half of the year. Defensively, 16 points is 16 points. They know there's areas that they have to tighten up. And you better do it because you got a team that can put up some points on you and a good quarterback coming for you this week. So overall, you beat your rivals. Final score didn't look all that close. Something to build off of. Something to build off of. Kick this team while you can, while they're down, before they get serious about football again. Solid win. Hope Hamilton gets healthy. I know he's going to be out this week. That's an issue when you're facing a quarterback like Howell. Got to find a way to overcome it. Unlike this game, now you have a full week to know Hamilton isn't there. That preparation is a lot different than Hamilton starts the game and he's injured and somebody else has to go in. Now you have a full week to prepare everybody else for their responsibilities entering the next ball game. So good win, beat your rival, some things to build off of, some things to tighten up as we enter the next ball game.